condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death for what the law was powerless to do and that it was weakened by the sinful nature God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering and so he condemned sin and sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to that sinful nature, but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of the sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. And this is the word of God for God's people. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So those of you who um, were teachers uh, before retiring, did you ever have a pop quiz for your class, you know, just for the excitement of, of seeing everybody sweat or run screaming out of the room and crying? You know, you know, remember those good times? Now that I've got your attention, you can relax because this, this isn't going to be a test. Well, well, not really a test. I want to tell you about a man who walked into the store the other day and was given an opportunity to live life in the spirit. Here's what happened. Uh, this man, we'll call him George. He walked into the grocery store to, you know, pick up a few items, and he grabbed one of those little plastic buckets that you put your stuff in. And as he was walking into the store a little further, he saw uh, another man, about 30, who had, you know, eggs in one hand and a loaf of bread and, you know, was just juggling everything and was trying to pick up some oranges. And it was just an accident waiting to happen. So George, of course, had three choices walk on by and ignore it, go over to the manager and say, there's a guy over there in produce who's going to make a big mess. You need to do something. Or, you know, George could just simply hand in his cart and go get another one himself. 
So that, that's the easy one. We know what George did, and the man said, well, thank you very much. Well then, as George was going up to the self-service counter to pay for his groceries, he saw that this man was having trouble again. He couldn't get his, his uh, debit card, apparently, to work in the machine, and so he was trying to pay with his phone. And the, um, well, the, the uh, clerk was saying, sir, you're going to have to download our app. Those are famous last words. You've got to download the app to pay the bill. So George had another, another uh, challenge. What do you do? Do you just ignore it and walk on by? Do you offer to pay for the man's groceries and, you know, settle up later? Or do you just say, uh, excuse me, can I help you out? So that, this one's a little bit harder, I think, because if you don't have an extra $50 in your account to pick up somebody's groceries, that could put a real strain on the family budget. And, uh, well, you know, maybe, maybe the fellow was just not a good shopper, you know? Maybe, maybe his, his spouse normally did all the shopping and he was just having a little confused day and he was going to download the app and everything would be fine. So George didn't know for sure what to do, so he decided he would just, you know, whisper a little prayer and let, let, and let uh, this man figure things out for himself. So that one is a little bit harder. George was leaving the store, and the, uh, the, the greeter at the front of the store, figure out which store this is, uh, said, gee, that was an awfully nice thing you did. And George, excuse me, uh, helping that man out, giving him your car. And George was kind of flabbergasted by that, and then he realized maybe even in Central Texas, common courtesy just isn't that common anymore. Thank you.